everybody. Let's talk about lighting. Lighting is a really important part of every RPG because you want to feel like you're here. And that means that you want everything to feel like it really exists and has some, some shadow is and stuff and looks great. So as we walk this direction, we've got a nice crisp shadow on ourselves, and ooh, ooh, look at that. Shadow's popping in. I've changed our ambient color to black because I wanted to have a really a couple of really dark areas in this world like underneath this area here but you can see that the shadows are drawn not very far at all how do we fix that well we extend the shadow draw distance so you go into edit project settings quality and you get this screen here and shadow distance is what I've highlighted 40 no wonder that's the problem let's change it to 2000 yeah that'll be great right pops in right away. No, no popping at all. Looks great. Uh, what is this pixely garbage coming off my character? Oh, that's awful. Well, you can think of every light as, and this is literally true, <laughs> but you can think of every light as having a uh, an image attached. So the shadows are like a, a pixel art image. You know, it might be a thousand pixels wide or 500 pixels wide or 4,000 pixels wide, and it gets stretched over the entire area that is being that shadows are being cast on and it gets stamped down and so if we set it to 2000 every one of these pixels is huge but if we set it to 40 every one of the pixels is really really tiny so um, so what sort of distance do we want to set it to well 2000 is probably too big but I mean it's an outdoor level how, how we're definitely gonna be seeing it from more than 2000 meters away right well maybe close you know something like that how do we deal with that? Now we're we just going to go ahead and accept that awful pop-in? Regardless of distance, it's still awful pop-in. Well, there are a lot of things we can do about it, but the easiest one is switch to four cascades. Well, now look, that's no longer such pixely garbage. That's still garbage. It's um, you know, it's like early Oblivion, or sorry, early Skyrim style shadows there, personal shadows. Uh, but it is much better. And what that is is the difference between the cascades is how many image it uses how many images it uses each image is used at a different distance so in this case uh, four cascades means that it splits itself up into one image for say 0 to 20 and then another image for 20 to 400 another image for 400 to 1000 or whatever something like that i don't know the exact image and the exact distances involved but it means that you get some really good quality uh, but still, 2,000 is too long. We're about 120 meters away from that temple at start, so if we hit play, and that pops in. We can back up here, and we can see it pop out. See? Pop, 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 pop. And our personal shadow is still very, very, very crisp. So maybe that's the right distance. We'll go ahead with that. Oh, wait, what's this? Good? Beautiful? Fantastic. Hmm. Well, as you might have realized, shadows are rendered differently depending on what the user picks as their quality level. Four cascades is too much for good. Good is something that people choose when they have a computer that's not quite up to the task of gaming, but they still want to play games on it. Fantastic and beautiful are both much more easy to... Um, uh, th these are, you can just assume that the player is, has a pretty beefy computer in this case. You can't assume that he'll be good at shadow, real-time shadows, though, because I found out that there are very, very powerful video cards that suck at real-time shadows. We'll talk about that later. But you can see that for both beautiful and fantastic, I have the same shadow settings. Why don't I have a longer draw distance on my, on my fantastic? Well, I, I showed you. The longer the draw distance, the crappier the personal shadows are. So, leave it at 150, have that nice sharp shadow. What about the resolution? Can we change the resolution? Well, yeah, you can, but in this case it's not going to matter. If we go over to the sun, I've already got the sun set to very high. I overrode the quality settings and said use a very high resolution shadow map because it's the sun. Um, so unless I was, if I switch it over to being use quality settings, then changing the quality settings would matter. But in this case, uh, that doesn't matter. Um, if if we could override most of the other settings, I would be much happier. So if this wasn't just shadow type, uh, if this wasn't just resolution, but also draw range and a couple of other details, I would be ecstatic. And I'd have like one light for personal shadows and one light for uh, what, well, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't exist. 
basically, because I've overridden the very high resolution settings, that means that when we extend the draw distance, this light actually gets worse and worse and worse. So we need to be careful of that. In any regard, that is the basics of the lighting system until you get to the concept of baking. Now, baking is important. Um, baking basically takes all of the calculations out of this system. So right now it's all real time, which means that light has to be calculated every frame, all real time, using lots and lots, lots and lots of expensive forward rendering nonsense and uh, or deferred lighting, and if depending on whether you're using Pro or not. Either way, it's really really expensive. Um, one straight up light like this maybe not so bad but if we add like a couple of torches and stuff like that it gets really nightmarish the way around that is to bake it baking it pre-computes all that all that crap and then all you have to do is compute which part of the shadow to render today and uh, and that's much much cheaper I'm gonna show you how to bake so you go into window and you go in down down into light mapping and it pulls up this light mapping thing here and uh, you need to put in whatever object you'd like to th talk about or objects. I've already pre-added the sun. You just do that by clicking on it, see? So, sun. If it's not lights, then obviously it's not going to work right. Uh, but you can see all the details with the light here. And, uh, and then we can go over to bake and we can take a look at the options for baking. So here we got the option of single, dual, and directional. Directional is probably best in more or less every situation, but it requires you to have tangents calculated on all of your meshes. Uh, our combined meshes do not have tangents. Unity 5 has the ability to add tangents to combined meshes, but Unity 4 point whatever does not. Uh, and unless you want to write your own tangent computation function, which you can do, uh, we're going to have to live with not having tangents, and that means no normal maps on them, and no directional light maps. We'll work on that later if we, if we decide to. Single light map means that it only calculates the light maps for far away. And that means that you get really blurry, blurry light maps. And then when you get close, uh, it should default to real-time shadows. But what actually happens is it defaults to real-time shadows for most objects. The terrain material does not. There's something glitchy about the terrain material where it just refuses to render uh, real-time shadows if you're using single light map bake shadows, and that means that you stop having a shadow. But it's only on the terrain. Like if you're rocking around on brick, your shadow suddenly shows up again. So I don't recommend using single light maps unless you have a really, really, really uh, a strong constraint on how much processing power you're allowed to use. Dual light maps is better. It calculates some uh, light maps for far away and for close. And so when you get close, it uses the more detailed light maps. And it also still does real time shading uh, for your character and other things that aren't static. Now, did I mention that? This is like my third time. I don't think I mentioned it yet. All of this baking only applies to things that are static. 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 Anything that is not marked static gets real time shadows. So I've marked almost all of our terrain here as static, um, but our people and our monsters are not static. And there may be situations where you mark something as static and then you want to move it and then you realize that, oh no, that's screwing it up. And then, uh, So you're going to have to be a little bit careful about what you mark as static. But the only things that are marked as static get calculated here. Uh, also, it takes longer and longer and longer the, um, the more objects are marked as static. Every, every object has a pass through this light mapping engine. So since I've got a couple hundred objects here, uh, well, not a couple hundred, about a hundred objects here, it goes about a hundred times through the lighting engine. And that's one of the reasons this takes so damn long. Um, I'm not going to let you watch to the end of this because it takes forever. So here we have high and low. I don't know of any reason to pick low. Someone can tell me if they've ever found a reason to pick low. Um, uh, maybe maybe there is some reason. Maybe it's a little faster or something. So bounces usually default to one. Uh, I like to have more bounces, believe it or not, because I like to have uh, more uh, cooler lighting. So if I were to go in, if I were to go underneath this cave over here, I haven't hit bake or anything. We're still using real time light maps or lighting. Uh, if I were to go underneath this into this dark area, you notice that it is it is properly pitch black in there, and the sunlight that comes through the cracks is. Uh, is just cast on a floor and does nothing to light the interior. 
so it's like really really dark bouncing will actually bake light maps uh, bake this this these lights into this interior here and we'll get these wedges of light subtly illuminating indoors and that's uh, really really nice the problem is that every bounce you specify uh, radically increases the time it takes and it's not linear uh, two bounces will take about half an hour to compute one bounce takes about five minutes ten minutes no bounces takes about a minute and a half two minutes so it's all about whether or not you uh, are willing to uh, deal with that now skylight and sky color intensity these are if you are um, trying to get outdoor stuff to work right and we are so what we might do is we might make this skylight intensity might be 0.1 but we need to be a little bit careful about um, fighting with our sun because our sun also provides light it's uh you know it's kind of up to you how you want to deal with that um, but the best part about this skylight stuff is that it should actually um, uh, still be dark in this constrained area but we'll get a little bit of light in through cracks that aren't in the direction of the sun which will be nice now our bounce boost is if we would like our bounces to um, to be brighter we want to increase these values uh, so this is a, the amount that gets bounced and this is the amount uh, uh, I've never actually messed with uh, bounce intensity and bounce boost separately I've already I've always moved them to the same value here since we are doing an outdoor scene where I would like to see some of this stuff uh, indoors it, uh, this, these dark areas I'm gonna be using a fair amount a fair number of them and I'd like the interiors to actually feel like they are lit by the wedges of light that come through and that means that I need to have strong bounces because the bounces are what's gonna bring that light in so here's another couple of details here I'm not gonna bother to worry about any of those because they are by default fine um, and these lock atlas resolution padding I normally don't worry about those at all uh, and unless you know more about light maps than I do you probably shouldn't either um, if you do know more about light maps than I do why are you watching this video uh, well anyway um, we're gonna go ahead and bake it but you know what I'm not gonna have you sit through and watch it be baked uh, because it's gonna take roughly half an hour maybe a little bit more I normally would go off and do uh, you know something else play a game or uh, go in blender and do some rendering so oh look it went away is it done is that all I needed Ooh, maybe it's done uh, no 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 not even close so the problem is that um, it's very hard to see the little thing that says that it's baking and it continues to bake in the background you could theoretically continue to work here in unity while it's baking but I don't recommend it because unity becomes quite unresponsive um, at least here in Windows. Uh, so what we've got here is a uh, a bar that will slowly fill up and you just need to wait for that to end and it ends in about half an hour here. If you don't feel like looking at that bar all the time they're also polite enough to put it on your um, uh, on your icon down here in your taskbar. So if you look down in your taskbar there will be a green bar at least in in this version uh, wiping across your icon and you can get an idea of how far along it is there when it's done you don't have to do anything else you just hit play and it works um, but uh, it's so far from being done that I'm not going to show you the results in this video uh, I will probably make a second video that's like just two minutes long showing you the results I'm also not gonna make this available for download because you can just edit the settings yourself alright that's it uh, and I'll see you in the next episode where we might talk about uh,